everybody, and welcome again to Bourbon Over Baseball with your host, Bob, and co-host, Peter. Merry Christmas, Bob. Yes, Merry Christmas. Um, got my bourbon again today. I got Woodford Reserve, a very smooth bourbon, very little more high-end, I guess, people, uh, sophisticated drinkers like their Woodford Reserve, but it's very tasty tonight. <laughs> Good. I'm uh, sipping on some warm tea, nursing a cold. Oh, no. That seems to be the case. You got to get that, get rid of it before Christmas. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I think my daughter's a little sick, my wife's a little sick, but uh, I think the bourbon has been helping me not get sick. Well, that's always good. You throw a little honey in that, and then you're good to go. Um, so today, obviously, we're rounding off the uh, for the American League, the playoff teams. We did the, the Red Sox, we did the Yankees, we did the Indians, obviously, first. We did, uh, who am I forgetting? We did um, Astros. the Astros. So that we did the big teams. And you come out to the last little bit of the team that made the wild card, the little money ball underdog, everyone's favorite underdog team, the Oakland Athletics. Yeah, and uh, really shocking how good they were this year. Their showdown team reflects how they overachieved a little bit. <laughs> But a lot of really useful cards for people in drafts uh, coming off this squad. Yeah, I thought the same thing as I was doing it. I was like, oh, this team did great. You know, they finished with a good record. They, you know, competed all year. They they, they seemed like they were doing great, but obviously with a low salary. But then I was looking at their on-base percentages, and I'm like, where's the, where's like the nines and the tens? <laughs> like, they don't have them. Yeah, uh, not a single one. And only a couple eights. It's pretty clear that they are a team that got by with a lot of pop. Uh, they've got a lot of home runs on their charts. Um, I think of this nine of the ten hitters, Homer at uh, 18, 17, or 16, or, or better even. Uh, so you're going to get a lot of home runs off your own charts. But against good teams with good rotations, uh, they're going to really struggle to put a lot of runners on base yeah i can't ta- can't wait to talk about that person that you're talking about that can get more than the 17 16 home runs but this team also what i noticed when doing it is a fielding team you you know with yes. the gold glove players so um beginning the lineup you got mark can uh, Kanha, i believe it's pronounced i'm not too familiar with him Thanks. um nothing special there 7 17 home run guy nothing too crazy you can play multiple positions but i think the second guy in the lineup is the one that people are going for and matt Chapman. Oh, yeah yeah, uh, earning the first plus four at third base. Well, I guess Nolan Arenado got one the year before. Yes, who I uh, think so, deserved it. <laughs> yes, and so did Matt. Uh, he was a legitimate MVP candidate mm-hmm. in large part because of his defensive skill. And he adds uh, a lot of pop to his on-base eight. A lot of people might instantly see the 18 to 20 home run and, and say, ah, not enough power for me, but doubling at 12. Triple at 16, this is a guy who's a really deadly weapon for only 350 points. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he was by far uh, one of the best defensive players in all of baseball and defensive run saves and defensive metrics that Fangraphs has, um, let alone that, you know, at third base or any any position. Yeah. Like, he was just one of the best in general. So he definitely deserves this plus four. I agree with you there. Eight on base, low salary, high fielding. You're getting yeah. on second base at a 12 here. Only gets out for one and two rolls. I, I, this guy's going to somebody. I mean, Nolan Arenado in my old draft got drafted up pretty quickly. I think this guy will follow suit. I think he's a first or second round pick just for the value alone. Yeah, I'm with you. Cornerstone player. Um, we slide then next to Jed Lowry, kind of slower guy. Um, Future uh, Brewer. Yeah, I was going to say, he's, 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 he didn't get signed to it, right? Not yet. Yeah, yeah not but, yet. You know, <laughs> we're Corey, hoping. Is Corey Kluber still one of those future brewers? Definitely, 100%. <laughs> Kluber, Lowry, and, you know, Machado's still on the market. So, <laughs> so obviously, Jed Lowry here, uh, he's a free agent. He's decent fielding at second base, gets yes. on base. Uh, he he, he kind of roller coaster to do throughout the season. He was like, really good at the beginning of the season, very high RBI yeah. guy. But overall, the card getting uh, on at three. Uh, doubling at 14, very solid. What do you think? He was uh, he was as close as they came to getting an on-base nine, I believe. Um, he was he's a really good player. Obviously, I want the Brewers to sign him in free agency because he's the exact sort of second baseman I really like, a guy who gets a lot of hits, um, dependable in the lineup. You know, he had a 353 on base in real life, which really stellar. All right, Chapman, Chapman was a little closer. But both of them, I think, were – 
were right in that vicinity, which is why they've got uh, walks at three. I mean, he's a guy who doubles at 14 with an on-base eight. That's always really valuable, especially for only 300 points. Good defense at uh, second base. Not a lot to dislike, just a really solid all-around So you want this guy or you want DJ LeMahieu on the Brewers? I want Jed. I'd rather have some pop. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I know DJ's, DJ's more got of a, all the defense. Yeah, and he, and, he, and he, well, he used to hit really good average, too. I don't really, know. Really, on base six last year. Yeah, so. last year was definitely disappointing, but in in previous years, he was like a guy that didn't hit home runs and would get on base. But, yeah, Jed. I think Jed, Jed was a nine in the 2017 yeah. set, too. Jed's been he, keeping it pretty solid. He's been very solid. And 23 home runs last year, getting uh, maybe that uppercut swing going. <laughs> And uh, home run friendly Miller Park might yes. be the perfect place for so, him to uh, finish out his career. Speaking of uppercut swings, you want to talk about this oh, next yeah. card? Another former Brewer, yeah. also, um, <laughs> and you know, guy who has really become maybe the premier power hitter in baseball. I consistency would, wise, the last three seasons he's leading all of baseball in home runs. Yeah, he's just been a smasher, and that, of course, is Crush Davis. That's um, right. A.K.A. the better Chris Davis. <laughs> Chris with a K. Yeah, Chris with a K has been killing it. Um, on base seven, so that's a concern for a lot of a lot of managers. But thirteen to twenty home run. That yeah. I mean, that's that's he, why you're getting him. He would be a concern if he was a five, but at a seven with a thirteen, I'm taking the high risk, high reward here. But the thing that hurts me high with risk. Him, one to five strikeouts. Yes. Oh, he's a strikeout or, or nothing kind of guy. Yeah. But but the thing that kills me here is the DH only. I have a tough time drafting DH yeah. only players. Especially but, 400 points. Yeah. I just, I love him as a player. Like, I drafted him in fantasy baseball. I think his card's super fun. Like, as a boomer bust yeah. kind of guy. I, I think someone's getting this guy. I mean, I, I, I might grab him. I don't know. I, I, I can't. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I can say he's very similar to, and I know we're about to talk about his 2018 edition, so it might slide in nicely here, uh, 2017 Matt Olson. Yeah. Who um, in our league was traded to the Astros where he hit fifth. And he ended up having a 231 average with a 321 on base percentage in our 30 games. But uh, over a fourth, of it, a fourth of his hits were home runs. So he he smashed the ball when he did get a chart. It's see, just uh, the thing I like about his uh, is it's very Joey Gallo. He's got yes. thirteen through twenty home run and a ten single. I'm like yeah. this is super funny. Like yep. <laughs> when I just look at the card, it's it's got a very interesting chart. But yeah. Anyway, go talk about Matt Olson since you started bringing him up. Yeah. So um, you know, a lot of people might decide to to put Chris Davis at first base and do you know the the negative fielding there. Mm-hmm. Um, but instead, you could do Matt Olson for 100 points less with another plus two at first base. Guy who really can uh, flash the, the leather, giving the A's easily the best uh, corner infielders oh, for sure. defensively. For, for sure. And uh, he walks at three, which is a big plus for his on base seven. So you know you're likely to get on at least if you get a chart. Because one of the things with a guy whose on base is, is lower than eight is you get the heartbreak if you don't get any sort of result yeah always oh, disappointing to not hit a home run with an on-base eight or a double but at the very least you know not an out I so agree. matt mitigates that risk gives you plus fielding at first base still double at 12 which is one less mm. uh for extra base hit than chris davis who doubles at 11 just happens to be that his home run is only uh, in sarcastic quotes at 16 <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I'm totally with you on this. Uh, these, this is how the whole A's team is, though. It's this yeah. low on base, but they'll get on base if they get the advantage. I, not Chris yeah. Davis so much, but the team has this feel to it, but it's got like a decent defense. I can yep. see people picking up Matt Olson. People like to grab a couple extra points and fielding here or there if you yep. sacrifice somewhere else. He can slide in. I don't know about on base sevens, but in a in a in a small sample, yeah. if you're just doing a 2018 draft, I think he fits in nicely. So on base sevens will probably get drafted a lot. They're going to have to be, I think, just based on point values. And then, and then Stephen Piscotty, their uh, number six hitter, another on base seven. I mean, the A's have a decent one through six, mm-hmm. but it's uh, it lacks the sort of 
star power that that a Red Sox or Yankees or Astros lineup does with with the 500 plus point hitter. Yeah, they just they don't have that. Viscotti, another quasi useful hitter, probably not going to make my team, but another on base seven, double at twelve, yeah. homer at seventeen type of guy. Um, it's interesting. Some guys will like him. It's interesting to see the team sort of salaries. It seems like yeah. the actual athletic salary. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're they're cheap. Overall, the A's lineup is only twenty three fifty mm-hmm. in terms of points. And as we've seen, that the really good lineups are approaching upon three thousand. Yeah. They're about 500 points less than uh, like the Cubs or Yankees mm-hmm. that we recently looked at. Yeah, um, and, and you, you quickly get on to the rookie, Dustin Fowler. Yikes. No, nothing crazy here. You got a five you know, yeah. out at out one through six, which hurts. He gets If he gets the advantage again, he's probably getting on second base. Yep. Um, but I do like the Marcus Seaman Carter. Is it Simeon? I think it's I think it's Semyon. Semyon, I I don't like obviously a six control uh, six on base guy, but I love shortstops of plus five and he doesn't yep. get out much. Good speed. Yeah, I seventeen. Just, I feel like this is definitely an Oakland Athletics card. Great um, double range too. Yeah, I I see him getting picked up uh, on a team that's just trying to fill a spot with plus fielding. Yeah, but it's not not great. Neither is Jonathan Lucroy. You know, obviously he was great He's when bad. he was. Yeah, when he was at the Rockies, he was solid, but he was not good last year at all. And so I, I don't see much anything happening with the him. I don't see anything happening with Chad Pinder or no. Matthew Joyce. Um, yeah. Though I do like Especially. the Matthew Joyce picture. He looks like he's oh, kind of yeah. shushing the crowd, but I don't he, know what maybe, he's shushing maybe himself. Maybe he'll shut up stuff, uh, <laughs> get him, himself on a team, and then yeah. uh, he'll find a way to overcome the odds of being an on-base six with a uh, – mediocre chart yeah well so anyway not too great there i mean obviously i i I have my favorites of chris davis but um yeah i want to talk about the pitching staff next where it can get a little bit interesting there's some fun cards here um with sean i don't have manea yeah Uh, manea he uh he might be the the best looking card i was gonna say let's talk about the (laughs) ace He's a, a really sharp looking pitcher here. Yeah, I got the. I, I found a picture. The ball's coming right at you. Uh, it's hard to find pictures straight onto the pitchers. Yeah. Obviously, you, the camera has to be like directly behind the catcher or something. Yep. Very fun card. It fits the card very nicely. And I do know a lot of people that like these three control guys, one through 17 outs. I don't personally. I don't like people that obviously double, but I do know some people that will take people that are three control, 17 out. I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of them. But there are people they, that will do it. They are the worst value, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I mean, and uh, in uh, hopefully, I'm trying to get posted for Christmas Day the the summary of that that full season we did. Yeah. And uh, the control. That's so control three one to seventeen out is is your control three at the the tier three level, mm-hmm. as my friends and I think of them, and they're always between you know. 420 460 points usually and they always get lit up like there seems to happen we're preparing for free agency right now after our first season and we're doing a like we're hard capping it now after we did our prospects and uh, the starters who are just getting cut in droves to make room for free agency or or prospects getting called up are all the control three tier two Tier three pitchers. Yeah, I, all the three one to seventeens are getting yeah. axed. I can see people drafting him, but I, I, I would not. I think Peter's agreeing. He's not drafting this kind of guy. Um, again, it's it's, it's it sucks. I, I like Sean as a pitcher, but yeah. uh, I think just the way his card came out this year, it's just it's not going to happen. Now, I would actually take this next pitcher. Um, I was just going to say, um, yeah, I like the value. I exactly, uh, and he, I think he just got picked up. On free yeah. agently, do you, do you know who we went to? Uh, he was signed by the A's. So Mike Fears just got picked. So back up to the A's. Uh, two year deal. Sweet. So Mike Fears. <clears throat> the the reason I like this card, I love Control Five guys, <laughs> and yeah. under three hundred points, six innings. You get your yep. standard one through fifteen out, and here's where you're gonna get killed. Twenty home run. Yeah. I get it. I get it. You're talking about an old Denny Nagel card here, but no double which is sometimes that will hurt you with an old Denny Nagel card, the Reds one that people like to play from the pennant edition. He gets hurt on the doubles. You're talking 
five percent of the time you could get hurt but the rest of the time maybe first base or out i i i, I think this guy actually can get picked up <laughs> The big risk is if you uh, you roll like I did in the World Series where I gave up three straight doubles off of Max Scherzer's chart, uh, that becomes back-to-back-to-back jacks. It does. And, you know, unfortunately, it seems like dice find their way to the 20 spot more than 5% of the time. <laughs> yeah, who's doing this math here? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, I, yeah, again, I think, he's, I think he's getting drafted. I, I feel like yes. somebody goes... I, I need a tier or like a third, fourth rotation guy, and yeah. I only have a couple, you know, a couple hundred points for a player. And I, am I taking this guy? I, mm. I, I can see people grabbing him. To be a really good number four starter. Exactly. I, I mean, I have Denny Nagel in my league as number three guy, and he's a six control, obviously. Yeah. But the doubles hurt, and I'm yes. okay here with not giving up the double and only risking that five percent chance to get to the home run. And maybe you pitch him five innings. Maybe you take him out if you yeah. got the lead. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and especially if he's your number four. And so you've got, hypothetically, your big-time ace who you're spending 550 to 600 points on coming up next game. Typically an IP7 guy. Just pitch Mike as far as he'll take you and then turn it over to the bullpen. Absolutely. You only, you only need three, maybe four innings out of him. Yeah. To, Put yourself in great position to win. And use the one bullpen guy we're going to talk about later, the witch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But let's talk uh, about this mustache player right now. Yeah, he, uh, Daniel Minchton, Minchton, I've never Oof. said his name out loud I before. I would have guessed that wrong. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, him, Trevor Cahill, and Edwin Jackson, all your typical control 2, 1 to 17 out type of guys, uh, all IP5. They basically all cost 300 points except... Uh, Good old Mustachio Daniel here. Uh, he gives up a, a single at 19 instead of a walk, so he's 290 points. But, uh, yeah, just kind of guys I don't expect to get drafted very frequently outside yeah. of desperation for salary. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not drafting any of these control. guys. Yeah. Um, but I would, and even as we we'll, we'll quickly get to the bullpen here, yeah. nothing too fancy here. A 4 1 through 17, uh, use Mero. Um, yeah, he decent. was better last year. I mean, he's still good. Uh, yeah, control four, one to seventeen out. This is the, exactly the type of guy I always draft. Yeah, so again, he's got a little bit chunky salary there, but um, he's not bad. I take him. Um, yeah. I don't know if I take Lou um, as a two one through eighteen out. Risky. He's risky. Um, uh, Familia just got put back on the Mets, which is interesting. Yep. Again, nothing too crazy there. Fernando Rodney, I actually don't mind this card because so he doesn't cheap. give up a double. <laughs> yeah, he just he might be frustrating. He, yeah. he might go through stretches where you just can't get anybody out. Yeah, because he's only one through fifteen out. That's the struggle that's there, too. and that's yeah. the tough part. So twenty I, points. Yeah. So, do you fit this guy in late? I I don't know. Twenty points is lovely. I I like that. It's like just stick him in there, but. <sighs> Especially filling out a bullpen or just a roster, you know, if you got your your twenty guys, that's all you can do, you, <laughs> you know. And it's like, ah, do I take a guy, another guy for my bench, you know, like a speed A twenty three guy to pinch run later in games, or do I just add another arm to the bullpen that might yeah. be potentially that, useful that doesn't give know, up like, a double. That, 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 that's where I, order. yeah, that's where I weigh it. It's like, yeah, he's yeah, he's facing the bottom of the order, like you're saying. I got a two control guy. That's rough. He won through fifteen out. That's rough, but no double. So if you do give the advantage, obviously it's going to happen. But if you don't, you're not getting hurt too much. But whatever. Let's talk about the the card that everyone probably wants is is the witch Blake. How, how yeah. you pronounce this last name? Trinan. I think I think you're right. Okay, you're right. I just call him the witch because yeah. I watch um, Pitching Ninja on uh, on Twitter. And he's always putting this guy, and his stuff is nasty. <laughs> Phenomenal. And uh, some people, I, I've already heard heard feedback uh, from, from the charts uh, on him only, only, in quotes, being a tier one, control six, one to 16 out, no doubles, uh, because I think it's, I think it's Madsen on the, the Nationals got the tier zero card because his whip was so good. Um, but 
Blake has an absolutely phenomenal card. Uh, if you, if you can swing it, this is the guy to fit, fit on. Oh, Doolittle, Sean Doolittle had the oh, control Sean five. Oh, Sean Doolittle, One yeah, eight. yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's he's the only reliever, uh, IP one reliever who's more expensive than uh, than Blake. But uh, the witch has a phenomenal card. He's a guy who should get drafted early. He's essentially an IP two, with yeah. how good his control is. I mean, it's not an IP three. Yeah, he, like you can easily pitch up three innings. He's great. I mean, I get a control six guy that can go one through sixteen out. I mean, whoa. Yeah. No doubles. <laughs> yeah, whoa. this is like, yeah, this is like a John Johnstone with no doubles. Yep. Uh, uh, it's, it's fantastic. Ton of strikeout range. Um, yep. I, I see this guy for sure. He is on a team. I don't know whose team he's on, but he's on a team. I, I don't know how far he get, early gets drafted because I don't know how far closers get picked up or how early yeah. on. But in terms of closers, he's getting drafted first, second. I mean, when people start grabbing closers off the board. But again, this is the guy we were just talking about. You got Mike Fears in, uh, or Fires, and uh, and he doesn't doesn't cut it. Well, I could throw Blake yeah. in for a couple innings, at least a two two out or two inning save, you know, something like that. And ideally, you just bring Blake in in the the fireman type role. Mm-hmm. I, for me as a manager, I bring him in against the top of a a lineup at some point. Yeah, get the big guys uh, out. Turned in, yeah. Use the control six against one, two, three, maybe four. Mm-hmm. Then use the control five the next inning. It makes total against, sense. And then you just the control four. I mean, hopefully you can go one through nine all outs. If not, if you get two and two thirds, two and a third out with him, super worth it. Oh yeah, and, and, and you're starting to talk about value. Is two forty yep. points worth two to three innings? I think it is, and, and I think this guy of all the athletics is the most valuable, um, and, and probably getting drafted first of all especially, the athletics. <laughs> especially, uh, I mean, it depends on your league. Yeah. For for my friends and I, relievers can pitch back to back games, and then they're tired on the third game. That's and if they pitch yeah, if they pitch three in a row, okay. they can't pitch in game four. Oh, we do two. You you can do okay. two in a row, can't pitch game three. Yeah. So we we do fatigue in yeah. game three where they just come in tired. Oh, interesting. And I think Matt does it uh, sort of the one step further from you, where if they pitch in the first one, then they're tired in the second one, and oh, then wow. can't pitch in third. So, but no matter what you do. With his high control and how good he is, you can easily pitch him three out of every four games. Yeah, I agree with you. Like four and five, actually. Like yeah. uh, if you just think about that, that's really valuable. Mm-hmm. That's and you know in a four game stretch, or in a five game, yeah, four game stretch. You know, a starting pitcher IP six usually goes six innings in their one start. Uh, you get six innings out of Blake very easily yeah. in that same four game span. Yeah, and the other times more. you use uh what's his face? You use uh Fernando Rodney. <laughs> yeah. Just use use him uh, uh, occasionally in there. Now I don't know if you have a chance to look at have you looked at the blog? Have you seen the alts? Oh, I've... I love okay. psychedelic crush Davis. Okay, so for people listening, hopefully you guys check out the blog as well. If you're just listening and if you're reading, hopefully you check out the YouTube blog as uh, and obviously subscribe, retweet, you know, help us grow this. But uh, obviously uh, Peter and Matt both love doing alternate cards. They'll change the backgrounds. I've done this before with a couple cards. But Crush Davis was the guy that I love um, from uh, fantasy baseball. I think he's just fun player. He's just boomer bust kind of guy. He just oh, yeah. screams awesome. And, again, he's going to strike out a lot. But So I just had some fun with maybe making a little psychedelic background. Uh, but I also thought – crush as in crush the drink <laughs> and and uh, yeah, delicious and uh, just making it sort of smashing this changing his name to crush davis again this is just for the people that just have a like to have a little fun the more serious players can obviously just get the uh, the regular stuff from us but uh for people that just like to have a little fun with their buddies uh just having the alternate cards as well you know instead of foils there's just just fun stuff like to have for you the fans um peter does this too you know just to have yeah, you, 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 the fans are the ones that obviously we're making this for. Um, so, you tell us. You know, is this dumb? Is this something you like? Uh, we'll, we'll keep it going. <laughs> it's up to you guys. Yeah, and if if you do if you do like it and you haven't seen the the college baseball oh, version yeah. <laughs> yet, go check out that old post. It's probably on the, the side column, um, and check out Jeff Samarja's card. Yeah. That one, <laughs> that's my favorite one to bring into uh, the games as a pitcher because it is. 
unique. Yeah, unique that, for showdown. And that's and that gets the talking point if you're just playing with your buddies and you you, you had a whole lasting line of green cards or whatever, and boom, here comes Crush Davis. It's it just you hope he hits a home run with his stylish alternate card. <laughs> yes. It looks like Austin Powers. Yeah, well, I just, I don't know why it came to my head again, just happened that way, but, um, all right, Peter, my bourbon's gone again, and uh, I think That's it's time quick. to wrap this up. Yes. All right, thank you, everybody, for listening, and stay tuned for next time. See you, everyone. <laughs>